Welcome to the short presentation on acetabular labral tears. My name is Benoit Matthew, a physiotherapist. I work as an extended scope practitioner in the NHS and also privately mainly dealing with runners and uh, young patients with hip and knee injuries. Acetabular labral tears are being diagnosed with increasing frequency because of improvements in MRI and arthroscopic techniques. It's recognized as one of the common causes of hip and groin pain in the active population. A short look on the anatomy. The labrum, the acetabular labrum, is a fibrocartilage structure. It outlines the acetabulum socket. It goes all around and it's completed um, in the inferior region by the transverse acetabulum ligament which completes the structure. The thickness can vary, it's normally around 2 to 3 millimeters. The outer layer inserts into the capsule. One of the key clinical tips is about 86 to 94 percent of the tears happen in the anterior quadrant. Some of the reasons for that could be poor vascular supply, it's mechanically weak and thinner and it's subject to higher forces. What are the functions of the labrum? It's got many functions including shock absorption, joint lubrication and pressure distribution. It deepens the acetabulum by nearly 21%. It increases contact surface area and it releases load and strain on the articular surface. It protects the articular surface from wear and tear and there is evidence that labral damage could eventually lead to early osteoarthritis. Now coming to labral tears, what causes a labral tear? There are multiple reasons. The most common one is that it is secondary to hip, abnormal hip morphology such as FIA or dysplasia. In certain sports which involves repeated pivoting motions on a loaded femur such as hockey, golf and ballet, um, it could lead to repetitive microtrauma and also end range position which happens in certain martial arts. I uh, can also strain the labrum. General hypermobility or capsular laxity is also a known factor. Trauma can also lead to labral tears, which is uh, less common. And labral tears have been implicated in more than 22 to 55 percentage of mechanical hip pain, so it remains a common cause. The clinical signs and symptoms. The typical presentation is uh, deep or a sharp pain in the groin region. Most patients don't pinpoint a specific event. Label tears can have mechanical symptoms such as clicking, locking and catching. The most sensitive is clicking associated with pain and generally label tears are higher incidence in women. Now looking into the aggravating factors, generally they have an intolerance to sitting especially with deep sitting in low sofas or low seats and activity which causes rotation and pivoting can also increase the pain. Generally they find squatting painful and they might not be able to do a, a deep squat. And during aggravation of the symptoms they might have an associated limp. They can be very irritable and associated with night pain. Now going into the clinical test, Michael Raymond who did a systematic review which was published in the BJSM had looked into some of the common tests. The most consistent physical examination finding is a positive anterior hip impingement test. However, it's not specific. It's positive in um, OA impingement as well as labral tears. The Thomas test is a more specific test which could be useful for identification of label tears. There are also other tests such as the Fitzgerald test and the grind test which might not be useful in the more uh, irritable but more to confirm the diagnosis. What are the imaging options? So common imaging options used are MRA or MRA. The gold standard is hip arthroscopy. The sensitivity of MRI is quite less, so it might miss most tears. MRI has a higher sensitivity. 
Some orthopedic surgeons also use diagnostic hip injections to help it to identify whether it's articular or extra-articular. Its diagnosis of label tears is a, diagnos is a challenge. Um, there's no test which can pinpoint on its own. So a combination of the history, clinical examination, special test and imaging all needs to be combined before um, you can assume that it's a labral tear. Going to the conservative management, the expert opinion is a minimum period of 12 weeks is recommended for trial of um, conservative management. Small tears can be managed with a successful rehabilitation program. If it fails with conservative management, a surgical referral might be appropriate. There are uh, many articles which look into the conservative management. There's a good case studies which was published in the JOSPT last year, which looked into a non-surgical treatment of acetabulum labral tears, which look into a three-phase program. Improving hip mobility is also important. This article by Michael Raymond had looked into um, some of the common methods to improve hip mobility. In summary, label tears is a common cause of groin pain in the active population and it's normally secondary to abnormal hip morphology. Mechanical symptoms like clicking and locking and catching can be present and generally they're quite irritable with night pain. A trial of conservative management is recommended and more small tears can be managed successfully. Do you find making a diagnosis harder with some hip patients? Do you want to improve your clinical reasoning on non oya hip patients? You might be interested in a one-day adult hip patient course, which is a practical and evidence-based one-day course which looks into uh, some common pathologies, both articular and non-articular. The top three reasons why you might be interested are structured assessment of this complex region. We'll be looking at differential diagnosis of more articular and extra-articular pathologies. And there's a big emphasis on the treatment element, which is both manual therapy as well as exercise-based with practical case studies. We've got dates coming next year in London, Manchester, and Norfolk. For further details of the course, please visit www.physiouk.co.uk slash runners. I hope you found uh, this presentation useful. Thank you.